What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we're going to be talking about the brand new MacBook Pro 16 inch. Let's get right into it. So first things first, this computer has been rumored for months now and we didn't know if it was going to be this week, this month, this year, it might be 2020, but today, Apple gave us the new computer. So based off the name of this computer by itself, you know that it's an updated computer because for the first time ever, we're getting a 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is the biggest laptop Apple has come out with since the old days with the 17 inch MacBook Pro. So it's very nice to see this, but they fit it in more or less the same footprint as the 15 inch, just got rid of the bezels on the screen. So it's a nice computer to have because it's not massive. It's just taking advantage of that bezel-less real estate. The screen itself, although it is bigger it is not that much different. It's still 500 nits. It's still P3 color gamut and we're getting a very nice screen out of this But there's nothing crazy about this screen It's just bezel less and bigger a big thing here is that the 16 inch is replacing the 15 inch not standing alongside it A lot of people were worried that this might be a more expensive high-end MacBook Pro Alongside the 15 inch, but that's not the case. It is replacing it So the price is actually pretty reasonable for this new refresh It's exactly the same for the base model and it's about the same for the more specced out model. The big thing that's been improved on this computer is the keyboard. We're going back to the 2012-2015 style keyboards and that means that it's going to be reliable and there are going to be no more sticking keys. It's not quite exactly the same as those older MacBooks which I love and still use and even though it's a hybrid between the two it does mean that it's going to be much more reliable than the previous gen keyboards. The keyboard now has a dedicated escape key which I'm a huge fan of because the previous gen glitched out all the time and it's always nice having a physical panic button just in case anything goes awry. The other thing is that Touch ID is now separate from the touch bar, which is very nice, so they're not interacting with one another, and I really like that. Another big thing about this laptop, especially after the last gen mishap with throttle gate, seems as though that Apple has tried their hardest to figure out the thermals in this laptop. They've increased the thickness of the laptop, which I am a huge fan of. We don't need a thin and light 16 inch MacBook Pro. We want a workhorse computer. So they increased it by 0.7 millimeters. And even though that doesn't sound like much, it does mean that it's going to be able to have better thermals. And that leads us to our next point, the bigger battery. Now, Apple is claiming 11 hours of battery life on this new laptop, which is improved over the previous gen laptop, and that's very impressive. This is due to the way they build the batteries, but they've also increased the wattage to 100 watts, which you may know is the largest battery you're allowed to bring on an airplane. So if you are a mobile person and you're looking to buy this laptop, and people who are looking to buy laptops usually are mobile. This is going to be the most powerful laptop you can bring on a plane without the TSA confiscating it. There are no new ports on this computer, which is kind of a letdown, but it's not a surprise because Apple forced this in with those four USB-C ports. However, now that it's 2019, 2020, there are still more products on the market that have access to USB-C, but it would have been nice to see maybe like a micro SD card slot. Getting into specs, the base models are not that surprising. They're almost identical to what you had last year with the 15 inches, but when you do spec this thing out, that's where it gets impressive. You can now configure it up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is mind blowing on a laptop, and up to eight terabytes, that's right, terabytes of SSD. That's insane. No one on planet Earth needs that in a laptop, but if you want to pay the big bucks, you can now put that in your MacBook Pro. The speakers on this new laptop are amazing, and they're some of the best speakers that Apple has ever made in a laptop, which is no surprise there. But the thing that they are saying is that the new mic array is very professional. And although it is much better than most laptops, and for video conferencing, it's going to be amazing, this is not what I would say replaces a studio microphone, but it is a very high quality microphone, so that's nice. The processors are the same as on the 15 inch. They are the current gen i9 and i7. So if you were looking for the next gen chips to be in here, tough luck, it's not going to be in there. Although I would assume that Apple is going to do a spec refresh in the near future. So that's a possibility. So now that the 16 inch exists as a product that Apple has done, I would be very intrigued to see if they go with a 14 inch MacBook Pro that has the same footprint as the 13 inch. That would be a very compelling product, especially for the price. I'm in need of a new computer, as you well know, if you've been following this channel, and this might be a very viable option for me. So I'm considering getting it. I'm not going to be a day one buyer because of the fiasco of last year, but I'm intrigued by this. Let me know in the comment section down below, are you thinking about buying this? Are you intrigued by this product? Have you already bought it? My name has been Mark Steiner and I will see you next time.